Hello and welcome to Quick and Creepy, where the killers come to you. Together, two cousins kidnapped, tortured, assaulted, and murdered at least ten women in the Los Angeles area, and one of the two went on to commit two more murders in Washington state. Their murderous methods included injecting their victims with various cleaning chemicals, ligature strangulation, electrocution, and burning. After the murders, the remains of their victims were often left nude out in plain view. The disgusting perpetrators of these heinous crimes were the cousins, Kenneth Bianchi and Angelo Buono. Kenneth Bianchi was born in May 1951 to a prostitute in Rochester, New York. He was given up for adoption as an infant. In school he was known to have angry outbursts and fell behind his classmates. At 18, he married briefly and also around this time claimed to a girlfriend to have committed murder, though this was not taken seriously. In 1976, Bianchi moved to Los Angeles, California to be with his cousin, Angelo Buono, where the two operated a prostitution ring. Angelo Buono was older than his cousin Kenneth. Buono was born in October 1934, and had a criminal record starting at the age of 14. This record included car theft, and an escape from a youth detention facility in California, the notorious California Youth Authority, or CYA. Despite being physically abusive to both girlfriends and wives, Angela was known as a ladies' man and had several children. Angelo used his charm to lure victims into his and Bianchi's clutches, and then together he and his cousin would force the women into prostitution. But things changed a year after Bianchi arrived in Los Angeles, when two of their highest earners escaped. Soon after, the murders began that would claim the lives of at least ten women, and these two perpetrators would become known as the Hillside Stranglers for their habit of discarding the remains of their victims in the hills surrounding the city. One of the ruses used was to impersonate policemen, and then arrest a victim from the streets. Bianchi in fact had applied to more than one police department, but was rejected from them all, and this method of abduction likely appealed greatly to him. Once they had a woman the two would take them somewhere where they would be tortured and killed. One of these locations was the auto upholstery garage Angelo owned. In a bizarre twist of fate, one of the women that the two depraved men would stop was the daughter of famed actor Peter Lorre. However, when they saw the name on the woman's license, they let her go as they feared it would attract too much attention. The first known victim of the Hillside Stranglers was a 19-year-old prostitute named Yolanda Washington. Her body was found naked in mid-October near Universal City. Her body had been cleaned to eliminate evidence however marks on her neck, wrists, and ankles remained where she had been tied up and strangled. Then, only two weeks later, on Halloween, the nude body of a 15-year-old victim was discarded in a flower bed in La Crescenta. The body also had the marks where she had been restrained and the cause of death was also found to be strangulation. Less than a week after the Halloween slaying, the body of 21-year-old waitress, Elisa Caston was found on a freeway embankment with evidence of assault and strangulation. Based on the location, police believed it would have taken two people to deposit her there. Only days after this on November 8, 1977, another victim, Jane King, would be abducted but her body would not be found for two weeks. Horrifically, on November 20th of that year, three victims were discovered, 
which sent the residents of Southern California into a panic. These three victims were 20-year-old Christina Weckler, whose body was found in Highland Park, and two friends and middle school children Sonia Johnson and Dolores Sepita, who had been abducted a week earlier. Weckler was found to have the same telltale marks of ligature strangulation, but also two puncture marks where she had been injected with Windex. Their bodies were found in a trash heap near Dodger Stadium by a nine-year-old boy. These horrors were compounded by the discovery of Jane King's remains on November 22nd. Her body was in an advanced state of decomposition, and the methods of torture used were unclear. This was followed by the abduction and murder of 18-year-old Lauren Wagner, whose body was found on the 29th in the hills of Glendale with ligature marks and burns where she had been tortured. Witnesses to her abduction heard her cry out you won't get away with this as she was forced into a vehicle. The final victims of the pair were Kimberly Martin who was working as a prostitute and who went to meet a client on December 9th and was not seen alive again, and Cindy Hutzbeth whose body was found in the trunk of her own vehicle which had been pushed off a cliff in Angeles National Forest. By this time, from eyewitness reports, the police suspected that two killers were responsible for the series of murders. However, not long after these last killings, Bianchi left California. He moved to Washington where he again tried to find some source of authority by working as a security guard. However, Bianchi was unable to quell whatever was inside of him, and in 1979, Diane Wilder and Karen Mandic were murdered. They had told friends they were house-sitting for Bianchi, which led police to his door. Soon, a search warrant turned up evidence of the murder in Bianchi's home, and further investigation and collaboration with the Los Angeles police led to his indictment for several of the Hillside Strangler murders. After a failed attempt at feigning insanity, Bianchi agreed to testify against his cousin. Other efforts were also being undertaken by Bianchi to mitigate or nullify his arrest. Working with a 21-year-old woman named Veronica Lynn Compton, Bianchi smuggled a specimen of his DNA out of jail for her to plant on a victim after killing them. This insane plot was meant to show that the actual killer was still at large. However, the murder attempt failed, and Compton found herself serving a life sentence in prison. Eventually, the two cousins were locked up never to set foot in the free world again. Buono was convicted of nine counts of murder and sentenced to nine life sentences, while Bianchi was only convicted of the Washington murders, and was given two life sentences. Angelo Buono died in California's Calipatria State Prison in 2002, while Kenneth Bianchi is still alive and housed currently at the Washington State Penitentiary in Walla Walla. This information is as of 2021.